I need to cool down. I need a little minty, fresh lemonade and Panzoni vodka to keep me from stewing about. You know, these, these crazy whack jobs, these crazy, crazy liberal whack jobs on the left. It's like, you know, we talked about it the other day. Uh, while it seems like when you put on your television, there are thousands and thousands of choices these days. Um, we have a heat map. I'm, I'll show it up tomorrow. Maybe I'll put it up tomorrow. But um, if, you, if you really know anything, media is really controlled by, like, three huge organizations. You got Disney, which controls, like, thousands and hundreds of properties. Then you got Viacom, which is, like, CBS, all, the, all this other crap. And you got, you know, uh, Time Warner. Um, which is Warner, the form of Warner Brothers and Time teamed up with Time Magazine. You really got three organizations on the planet that control 95% of the media that you're forced to consume. And um, Out of Shadows, a, a video on YouTube that I would encourage you to watch if you care at all about, you know, whether or not there's a massive elitist pedophile ring trafficking children and extracting their bodily fluids. Um, but if you watch Out of Shadows, you will see, and oddly enough, I'll just tell you this, yesterday we had on Brian Boyd, a great friend of the show, okay, he's worked at all levels of government, he was a Navy SEAL, he was a commander of Special Forces, Special Ops that, that, that trained the Special, the uh, Navy SEALs. Um, and although there's empirical evidence out there from Freedom of Information Acts that the CIA has an office of Hollywood engagement that liaisons with the major studios in Hollywood, um, I asked Brian Boyd straight up, hey, all your years, 30 years in intelligence and Department of Treasury, Department of Justice, is there an office of Hollywood engagement? And he said, no, not that I know of. That might be, that might be a little more than, than I could talk about. So that tells me even more that, you know, the deep state is coordinating with the major media providers like Disney, like Viacom, um, to put things in our head, which is a little bit crazy. Speaking about um, putting things in our head, I've tried to put every single thing imaginable in my head to make it appear that I have hair. Um, and it is a, uh, a law of diminishing returns. But uh, the great thing for you is that we're joined right now by... Uh, Maggie Vandenberg, my dear friend, also known as uh, Fog City Midge, uh, social media influencer, extraordinaire, conservative filmmaker, and uh, you know, great friend of Liquid Lunch. Midge, uh, I don't have to go to the hair salon that much, me personally, because I have very little to work with here. But um, apparently out where you are, in Cali, hairdressers and nail salons are, you know, that's that's that's... Verklempt. Nothing's happening there right now. Yeah, John, it's been crazy out here in California. So as you know, we were all set to reopen a couple weeks ago, and then things started to change, and our crazy governor sent us back into shutdown. So, so many businesses were just waiting on pins and needles to reopen their doors, and were totally prepared to do so. And then when they got that call, hey, guess what? You're not going to be re reopening. Or maybe they had just reopened the day prior and now they were supposed to re re you know, shut down again within 24 hours. A lot of businesses are devastated. But so many consumers as well have just been eagerly awaiting a time when they can get their hair cut, when they can go back to feeling normal, just, just getting back to normal life. And so many hair salons and now nail salons here are operating illegally be you know behind closed doors after hours they are running their operations in, in a way that feels like communism to me you know it's no. really funny oh listen i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna tell you something that's so germane to this topic so in new york we were facing the same thing salons were closed you can't get a haircut you can't get your nails done right so I uh, came up with this ingenious idea to have a protest at my house. And we were protesting the closing of salons. And then I invited 
all different salon owners, hair cutters, massage therapists, nail salon, manicure, pedicure. And I turned my whole grounds of my property into one big outdoor hair salon, right? And I'm telling you, we were doing 100 haircuts on a Saturday. We had massages, pedicures, manicures. Everything was going. And what I did was I said, work out a deal with the person and you guys Venmo, pay cash, whatever you want. But anybody who gets a service, $10 goes in the pot to a charity. So I made it a charitable event. So if you cut a deal with the barber for a $30 haircut, you gave him a little tip, and then everybody threw $10 in the, in the, ice, in the ice container. Um, and whatever money we left at the end of the day, we gave a different charity every, every day, right? And it was going for four, three weeks strong. And you know some neighbors, some liberal freaks that live in my neighborhood called the Department of Buildings on me and said that we were running an illegal commercial establishment out of my home. And there was no commerce. I was putting out beers and food. I, it was costing me money, but it was like a good thing for society. Um, and the haters are just so bad right now. Even when you try to do something good, we gave $2,000 the first week to kids with cancer. Um, from the haircuts, and they're still hating. They want businesses to die, it seems. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm living in 1984, where, you know, leftists want to close down people's ability to earn a living, people's businesses, people's ability to congregate and have fun. You know, it's crazy to me that we can have protesters out there in the tens of thousands, but if a small group wants to get together and have a prayer session at their house, the neighbors are calling the cops on them. How dare they have 10 people in their home at one time? And this is this is what's becoming just so insane. It's not just the tyranny from our government, but the fear of, of your neighbors, that they're going to call you, that they're going to try to shut down this positive thing that you're doing, you know, for charity. And also just so people can have somewhere to go, be around other human beings, do something normal. Um, as you were telling your story, John, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, that would never happen in California because there would be some leftists sitting there waiting to call the cops on you. If they saw a group of cars in front of a home thinking maybe they're having a party, maybe they're doing something fun, I'm going to call the police. And and this is the world that we live in right now. And it's very it's very scary to see the divide. Yeah, um, well, I could tell you that that, that happened early on. Um, people called the regular police and the police came by were like, what's happening? I'm like, I don't know. I got like, you know, 25 people in my yard right now. We got lines drawn, everybody's distanced. My mom lives next door, so we could actually have another 25 there. We're under the limit. And the cops were like, all right, don't worry about it. So they went to the next level and went to the Department of Buildings and said, I'm running, you know, a commercial establishment. The Salon by the Sea was what they, we called it. But I don't want to get caught up in that because I want to get your take on this Kanye stuff. It's going, it, it, it's bizarre. But I also feel like I want him to hang in there because I know that young African-American and minority kids are probably going to vote him. And those are all votes that would go to Joe Biden. Yeah, I think that might be kind of the greater plan here of what's happening. Uh, it's funny because, you know, Kanye West announced that he's running for president. Obviously, he's not a serious candidate because he's not going to be on on many ballots in many states. So, you know, this whole thing is just sort of a publicity stunt. But I have to say, I watched the entire live stream of his first campaign event. And it was a mess. Oh, my goodness. I, I couldn't believe that they had such poor audio and video quality for someone of Kanye West level. You would think he would hire the best in the business to make sure that, it, you know, technically it went off without a hitch. But it didn't. The audio was cutting in and out the whole time. You, he wasn't mic'd up. You could hardly hear him. And, you know, he went on these sort of these these long emotional rants. So that's sort of the bat, the downside of whatever was going on with Kanye. But the positive thing is he's standing up there and he's talking about things that are not normally spoken about in the black community, spoken about by politicians. He's up there talking about the emotional impact of, of abortion and what it does to, to families and communities. He's talking about crime. He had he had everybody up there saying, you know, we don't have a gun problem. We have like a, a crime problem, a sin problem. And he had the whole audience say with him. 
guns don't kill people, people kill people. Wow, all right. These are right wing talking points he's doing. I like it. I like it. I hope he I hope he keeps it I hope he keeps it together. Um I just want to point this out that while you're on here talking about the hair and nail salons that are closed or operating illegally, your hair looks magnificent today. It looks uh, quite done. So you must be, you must have found one of these undercover uh, operations that are taking care of you. But Midge, thanks for always joining us. You're the best. And you, you out there, check out Fog City Midge on social media. She's the best in the business, if you ask me. Thanks, Thanks, Mitch. John. Always you, a delight. You are the bomb. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with some news of the day with just JT and a full jug of uh, fresh mint lemonade and panzoni right after this.